good. Joy in the morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, we're running late this morning. But this is Tuesday morning in the land of the living. So glad that you hung in there with us and that, Jonathan, and that you are with us. Praise God. Hallelujah. One moment, please. Just a couple of adjustments here. right with you here. I'm Prophet Tina and Apostle Jonathan will be with us in just a second. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Today we're going to be talking more about the trust, trusting in the Lord and how important it is to believe, <laughs> to be a believer and to understand totally and completely what it means to be a believer today. Uh, you were given the measure of faith when you got first got saved, but there's more faith, okay? More faith that we need every day to go into, you know, the full realm of what God has uh, for us in the earth. And so as God is taking us from glory to glory, and it's exciting that we're on his ride, amen. But as we go from glory to glory, what that means is we are going from faith to faith. Amen. Our faith must increase, okay, as God is taking us on this wonderful, wonderful joy ride. Good morning. This is Joy in the Morning, and we are the Sunrise Prophets. I am Prophetina. Hi, I'm Apostle Jonathan. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Are you ready to trust the Lord <laughs> even more than ever before? Oh, that's what it's all about. Jesus said... When they ask him the question, how do we do the works? How do we work the works? How do we work nice. the works that you do? Yes. He how said, do we do that? You have to believe in the one the Father sent. How do Amen. So Amen. we're not looking at that as a trite little statement. Yeah, I, got, I was born again a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We're looking at that as fully trusting, taking it to the next level of fully trusting him. How do you? Where we get to know the Father God in such a way that we understand that he is a healer, therefore he heals. He is love, therefore he shows his love. Yeah, he, is, he is. He doesn't oh. have to. He's not going to stop loving you. He is love. <laughs> so that's his nature. His nature is love. His nature is healing, you know. His nature is health. His nature is prosperity. And so when we enter into his graces, uh, tip that one down a little bit, the middle one. Tip it down. Tilt it down. Yeah, just a little bit. That's a little bit more. That one's fine. Yeah, we're still adjusting our... Oh yeah, that's much better. Praise God, I can see myself much better now, but praise God. And so, uh, as we are looking at the divine nature of God, praise God, as he presented his divine nature to us through Christ Jesus, praise God, we are to conform to the image of Christ. And what we've been doing is we've been looking at that image, okay? in a little bit more detail than we normally look at the image. We know that God is love. Christ is love. Amen. So we know that God is a healer. Praise God. He's not a healer. He's healing. That's what he is. Healing is his nature. Praise God. And so when we step into his presence, when we step into his love, when we step into his covenant, we step into all of these uh, graces that he has assigned for us. So you are in uh, the circle of the covenant of God, and in that covenant is life evermore. In that covenant is redemption. In that covenant is sanctification. In that covenant is glorification all through Christ Jesus. But in that covenant of God, praise the Lord, there's health, there's healing, there's deliverance. Everything that you need, praise God, is there for you to access. Praise God. And not only is it there for us to access, Christ showing us how to access us, access it, but also giving us an opportunity to come before the throne of grace, opening the door to the throne of grace for us, going on ahead of us, that we can come before the Father now when none, these things are not operating in our life according to his word, praise God, and we have it on his word that God cannot lie, his word is truth, and so we can now, we have access through Christ Jesus into the throne of grace to find mercy and obtain grace in the time of need. So whatever it is that you don't have, he's promised to supply all of our need. And so you can go before the throne of grace. We can all go before the, before the throne of grace in a timely way. 
to receive a timely anointing and a timely blessing of those things that have already been provided for us. Oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> Praise God. I'm blessing myself this morning. Praise God. And so he spread a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He always causes us to triumph because he triumphs. And we have the victory because he does. Hey, good morning to victory morning. This is victory day for you. Praise God. This is triumph day for you because it is the day that the Lord has made for you to rejoice and to be glad in it. Praise God. That's <laughs> Praise another God. day to rejoice, another day to seek his face. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if we want the glory of God to be revealed in our lives, mm -hmm. we need to seek him daily. Amen. Amen. Let's just go before the Lord in prayer and ask for him Amen. to bless this time together. Amen. Heavenly Father, oh, we love you today. We ask that you would bless this time together, oh, with you, Hallelujah, and each of our friends that are joining us on this different streaming. And we bless you, oh God. We bless your holy name. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah. We bless you. We honor you. We rejoice over you. Oh, we thank you for your love and your kindness, for your teaching and your truth. Oh, for your power and your forgiveness, yes. for your comfort and your love. Oh, we thank you, oh God, that you haven't overlooked us. Hallelujah. You don't uh, act like the enemy and saying, oh, you blew it this time and so I'm going to forget you and I'm going to call you names and, and put you down. But no, you came to give life and to give it more abundantly. You came to give health and refreshing. We establish your kingdom. Hallelujah. As you lead and guide and direct us, oh God. Hallelujah. Come forth thy kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Oh, we bless you, oh God. We want heaven on earth, and so we call upon thee, Lord, hallelujah, to remove the sin and the, the junk and all the screaming and the hate that's in our world, Lord, and bring forth your love and your truth, your kindness, your forgiveness, oh, your, hallelujah, your power over the enemy, we pray in Jesus' name. And provide for each one today, we pray. Give us this day our daily bread, all the finances that we need, all the health and refreshing that we need. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, and lead us not into temptation, Lord. But before we pray that, I want to pray we forgive those who have hurt us. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Thank you for your forgiveness. We plead, plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. And thank you for your forgiveness. Oh, Lord God, for things that we've done and things that we've left undone. Lord, we just ask for your mercy. And we extend that mercy to others by faith today in jesus name hallelujah not holding grudges not holding bitterness not holding slander but holding forth the word of life hallelujah mm. we thank you for that forgiveness we thank you for that freedom we thank you that we no longer have to live in bondage in jesus name Amen. hallelujah and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil hallelujah we put on Oh, the armor of God like a shield, righteousness, peace, truth, salvation, preparation of the gospel of peace, faith, the sword of the Spirit, praying at all times in the Spirit. Oh, we bless you, O oh God. We bless you, O oh Lord. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you. And we pray that you would give us a holy boldness to go forth and proclaim your word in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll remember to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless the prophetess right now in Jesus' mighty name. Bless her. Let her know that she's loved, empowered, strengthened. Give her the words of life that you would have her speak today. Oh, refresh her, sanctify her, renew her in the mighty name of Jesus. Give her strength this early morning, we pray. Amen. And we pray for you, that the Lord would anoint you and touch you for the day's activity. Oh, that you would be anointed to speak the words of life, prophesy according to the Lord's command, hallelujah, to the nations, to your neighbors, to the church, whoever he speaks to you about. In Jesus' mighty name, I see a company of prophets arising that will speak life and health and peace. Hallelujah. Speak truth 
Hallelujah. Will not be deceived by the enemy's voice. Not be deceived by the voices that are clamoring in this world. But will speak the truth. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I see a company of apostles arising to put things in order. Hallelujah. To bring the church together so that when we have church, we have apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Not separate, but working together to expand the kingdom of God. To bring order and power and unity so that when there's a voice heard, hallelujah, I see a day coming when the church speaks. The power of God is behind them, hallelujah. The world listens, the nation listens because they know that God is with them, hallelujah. Even as the nation of Israel overtook uh, took over uh, that precious promised land. They feared the people because they knew that their God was with them. Mm-hmm. Oh God, I see a day coming when you're going to establish your throne on this earth. Hallelujah. And we bless you, oh God, yes. in the mighty name of in Jesus. Name. Let us realize the part that we're playing in your kingdom in the, in the, in the world of time. Hallelujah. We bless you. We expand your kingdom and we pray. Jesus is Lord, come thy kingdom, be done thy will, even this day, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have your way today. Amen. Amen. Praise God and Father, as always, we uh, call on your grace today. Let your grace be with us. Hallelujah. And we call on the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, the great comforter, the great keeper. So, Father, hallelujah, we welcome you, Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost, you are welcome in this place today. Hallelujah. So the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge rest upon us today. And Father, let this word be a foundation for your people to anchor them in their most holy faith in you, Father. In Jesus' name. And so let the meditation of our heart, hallelujah, go forth, Father, and use us, Father. Use Jonathan and I for your glory this morning. We yield ourselves to you. We yield ourselves to your pleasure, your presence. Thank you. Have your way. Take pleasure in us this day, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And so we've been in one of your favorite chapters in the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 11, haven't we? Amen. I love to read about the conquering heroes, hallelujah, of the faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, how they stepped forward and were able to accomplish things on, the, on behalf of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's awesome to think that people from every generation, oh, hallelujah, every people have had somebody that said, I'm going to step forth and do what God says, hallelujah. You can find plenty of examples. If you're looking for examples of people that have blown it, people that have missed God, people that have been deceived, those those people are out there, but we choose to look and see what the scripture says. We choose to look and see those people that have been able to overcome Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, not even loving their lives to the point of death. Oh, we thank you. That is how we overcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're looking at overcomers. We're looking at people of faith. We're looking for people that are taking the next step, that are going higher in God. Hallelujah. They're going to the next place. (laughs) Are you going to be satisfied with the status quo? Are you going to be satisfied with things... Uh, as they have yes. been, or are you going to reach for God and get more? Hallelujah. I want Amen. more. Amen. Hallelujah. We often are talking about, you know, watch out, prophets. Let's make sure we do things the right way. But the last thing we want to do is take away your fire. Hallelujah. We want that fire to keep yes. on raging. Hallelujah. Absolutely. We're going to put more coals on it. We're going to put more fire. We're going to get yes. you going. Hallelujah. We Burn want God up. to move in strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Holy Ghost and Woo. fire was the promise of the of the Jesus, of the Messiah. Hallelujah. We want you to get fired up, empowered, strengthened. Yes. Hallelujah. So that your life is just burning as you're going through life. You know what? When you said that, you know what I thought of? The pictures that I had in my mind. You know those race cars? I don't know what they call them. But they would the have dragsters. The, the dragsters and have the big fire blowing out the back of them. And that's how I see, you know, as you were praying, that's your desire for God's people to have that kind of fire. You know, the firepower of God pushing you on through 
catapulting you on through, you know, throwing you, sending you on through into the next realm from glory to glory to glory. You know, no more lackadaisical kind of mediocre, you know, attitude towards God. But God is causing us to catch on fire in ways that we didn't never even thought that we could be on fire. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. And it's the fire power of the very presence of God that is catapulting you, sending you through on in to glory, from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Isn't that exciting? Praise God. <laughs> Amen. That he sent, hallelujah, the inertia. He sent, you know, the power, you know, he sent, you know, the, how do you, how do you want to say it? The, um, you know, we don't want to say horsepower because it's greater than horsepower. You know, when the, when the, um, the, um, rockets go up. How about a yeah, jet, jet fighter power. taking off, yeah, you know, I know. <laughs> rockets, yeah. Praise God. So get ready, Avery and Tiffany and Prophetess Denny and Apostle Charmaine, you get ready, you know, for that fire power of God coming forth like never before. In the name of Jesus, just sending you on through into the new realm that he's assigned for you. And so we talked a little bit about barriers yesterday that would keep us back. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those today. But what I want uh, Jonathan to do, this is Jonathan's, one of Jonathan's favorite uh, books in the Bible. And so we're talking about faith. We're talking about the kind of confidence that you have when you are a faithful servant of God, the boldness that you have to do the things that he's called you to do. Praise God. But we know that faith, hallelujah, is absolute trust, you know, in God and in his word. Praise God. And so listen to this. I'm going to read from, we're still in, we haven't even been able to get out of Hebrews chapter 11. We did all the chapters that led up to this, but here we are in Hebrews 11 still, and God is still blessing us, you know, out of this book. Praise God. Hallelujah. Out of this chapter. Okay, but before Jonathan gets into the heroes, I just want to let you know, you know, that the word of God tells us in Hebrews eleven six that without faith, without trust, without confidence, okay, without totally abandoning yourself, hallelujah, to God, it is impossible to please and to be satisfactory to him. Okay, impossible. You know, God's word does not lie. God is a God of possibilities. He is God possible. Nothing shall be impossible to him. But look what it says here. He, it says here, the Hebrew writer is telling us that we operate in the spirit of impossibility when we don't have faith, when we don't operate in faith, okay? Because if we are not operating in this kind of trust, this kind of confidence, this kind of boldness, this kind of abandonment to the things of God, then we are walking in impossibility, okay? Where we have a God of possibilities, so we are anti-Christ. We are anti-God when we don't believe. Mm -hmm. We are against God when we have an it's unbelieving powerful. heart. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Unbelief is sin. Mm. Even if you're already saved and God is speaking to you to do something, to call you to do something, summoning you to a place, and you refuse to do it, that is sin to you, and you are actually operating against God. You are operating against his flow, against his power, mm. against who he is. Because God, nothing is impossible with him, but you cause impossibilities when you don't operate in faith. When you don't operate in trust, total and complete abandonment to his ways, his purposes, his plans, and his call for you. Praise God. Who can fight against God? Whose arms are big enough? I went to see a Broadway show many years ago, Arms Too Short to Box with God. How are you gonna how are you gonna come against God, the Creator? And it's stupidity, it really is stupidity to think that your little stank attitude, okay, <laughs> you know, has got some kind of power or so you know what I'm saying? You got no power in your stank attitude. You are going against God Himself. And let me tell you something, I know who the winner is. Okay? And I know that you are not the winner as long as you are operating in unbelief. Okay, and unbelief is anti-God because it says here that without faith, this is Hebrews 11, read it with me. Hebrews 11 verse 6, without your faith in God, without your trust in God, without your confidence in God in every situation, in every area of your life, immersing your whole total self into an, ab an abandonment to his truth, abandonment to his way. Abandon yourself, let go of your attitudes, let go, you know, of that mindset. 
you know, that you keep talking yourself out of what God wants you to do. Okay, like it's not God. You keep, you know, telling yourself, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do it that way. Why I got to do it that way? That is actually an anti-Christ spirit, anti-God spirit. Because it's causing you to walk in a realm where nothing is possible for you. When we serve a God of possibilities, he is God possible. All things are possible to him. So without faith, without trust, without confidence in him, it's impossible to please him and to be satisfactory to him. Who wants God to be satisfied in them? <laughs> Who wants to get that epitaph? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Me? Hey, I'm in there. I want to be in there, okay? I want to do everything. I, oh, God, tell me what to do today. <laughs> Come on, God, let's work this thing out. Let's work it, God. Let's work it. Whatever it is, I don't care what it is. Just tell me what to do. We're working this thing together for your glory, for your kingdom. We're going, and I'm going from faith to faith in the Lord as well. Hallelujah. So, but without faith, trust in God, that means trusting God and confidence in him, it's impossible to please and to be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God, and this is what we want to get on today, must necessarily, absolutely, okay, with unequivocably, okay, believe without a shadow of a doubt that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him. And so we're going to be talking about believing today. We don't want to just run over that, that word it's necessarily for you to believe. What does it mean to believe at the level that you're on as a prophet and as an apostle of the Most High God? What does belief mean for you? What does it look like for you in this realm? You have already, you know, come to Christ Jesus. You've already been saved. You're already helping other people to get saved. You're already leading, you know, in the body of Christ. You're a leader. God has called you to be a leader. So at this stage of the game where you are right now in God. What does faith look like? What does belief mm -hmm. look like? What does trust look like to you? Does it look like the same trust that you put in uh, Christ? You had to believe in Christ to be saved those many years ago. Does it look like that? Okay. Or is it some other place that God is taking you? Now that you've gotten that faith, you should have gotten faith after faith after faith upon faith until you've gotten to this place. Well, it doesn't stop Man and woman of God, it doesn't stop. God is about to shoot you out, you know, into, you know, the what we call the inner space of the body of Christ, okay? Into the outer space of the world. Hallelujah. Catapult you out there with the firepower of his holy presence. Hallelujah. And it's going to take more faith than you have right now because as the, the um, uh, late Kim Clement sang, Kim Clement, you're somewhere in the future. And you look much better than you look right now. <laughs> Praise God. And so we're going to talk about belief. But Jonathan is going to talk about some of the heroes of faith before they do that. We want to encourage you in your most holy faith to come on to the next uh, level of, that God has for you. The next place. And today again, we talked a little bit about barriers yesterday. But we're going to talk more about some of the kinds of things that can hinder you from going to the next place. Amen. I'm going to be reading out of the uh, Amplified Bible. And it just pulls out some words that adds a few adjectives and mm -hmm. things like that that helps us understand just a little bit more. In the King James, it, it says, By faith, Noah. But in the Amplified, it says, Prompted by faith, Noah. Prompted, prompted. prompted by faith. See, that, that, says, that bespeaks action. There's an action to faith. There's a power to faith that catapults you in movement, in direction towards God, towards the things of God. And so when we talk about faith, faith is not dead. It's not, it's not dormant. Faith is always acting, always moving, always doing. Okay? And so that's what we want to put in your heart, you know, today. Because to say that you have faith in God and then not to do anything about that, you know, to believe in God and then not to do anything about uh, his kingdom, not operating in the kingdom, you know, actively, that's a dead faith, okay? And so now we want our faith to be activated by the, the sheer firepower, rocket power, jet power, Holy Ghost power, <laughs> you know, of the Holy Ghost to, to, to catapult us into the areas and the place that God wants us to be in. Praise God. And let me tell you something. 
you 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 had a booster when you got saved when, when you first got saved you had that booster anointing carrying you up into this realm but praise god i'm going to tell you something you need another booster to get into the next realm that god has for you praise god this new realm oh man god is coming himself in all glory and might himself stepping down on earth and he wants you to be prepared and ready to see him because if you don't have the faith to see him if you don't have faith is you're not pleasing him okay Praise God, it's impossible to please him. So how are you going to see him? How are you going to be with him in this new realm if you are not activating, hallelujah, the faith and the trust that you have in him? Praise God. So activation time. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. In the book of St. James, it's written that faith, I'm going to show you my faith by my works. Amen. Not, Amen. You know, it's, that's where faith, faith is, our works shows our faith. Amen. 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 So we're, here, prompted by faith, Noah, being forewarned by God concerning the events of which as yet there was no visible sign. Hmm. Prophets, are you being forewarned these days? Mm -hmm. How do Is the Lord talking to you about the future and what you need to do? And praise God. He, Noah, took heed and diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an ark for the deliverance of his own family. Mm -hmm. hmm. He took heed diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an ark. You know, you can do your work reverently. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. He's building a boat, mm -hmm. but he's able to do that reverently. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So let's God. talk about that, taking heed to what God is saying. Because God is telling me that some of y'all, when God comes and talks to you, you don't take heed to it. You're not doing what it is that he's given you to do. Sometimes it's because you just stuck up like that and you don't want to <laughs> You know, other times it's because you're afraid of man. You know, other times it's just that you're too lazy to get up off your rusty dusty and do it. Okay, all kinds of excuses out there for you not doing, you know, what God has, has called you to do. Praise God. Well, and, and think about it. We've, you know, the prophetic has been difficult uh, for the church to understand, mm -hmm. right? And so what happens is the church falls, you know, comes back and says, well, you know, if if the if the words of the prophet are, are good, then maybe we'll listen to it and maybe we'll mm -hmm. do something about it and maybe we'll incorporate that into what we're thinking. Yeah. And maybe we'll we'll go down to it. How to do it? But you, O oh man and woman of God, you, O oh man, prophet of God, you cannot look at the prophetic words that way. No. If the Holy Spirit is using you to prophesy, you have to understand the importance and the power and the intent. Uh, of what's going on yes, here. Hallelujah. Right. You have to understand these words of life have power. Amen. That when you prophesy into the atmosphere, oh. when you prophesy to bones, or when you mm -hmm. prophesy to the wind, or when you prophesy to the earth, or when you prophesy to a nation, hallelujah, those are the Lord's words that are it's having not, a power released. It's hallelujah. It's not even you. It's not even you. God is speaking through you. It's his word through you. Praise God. And so what are you afraid of? You know, uh, just say what God is saying and let him let him uh, send those words out to perform what it is that he wants them to, to perform. That is his promise. And so it just grieves me so that when God puts a word in your mouth and you bite your tongue, you hold your tongue back, that just grieves me. I know it grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves God himself. Praise God. But God wants you to open your mouth now, to open your heart and open your mouth and speak what thus saith the Lord, and stop biting your tongue on those things that God has given you. How can a prophet be a prophet and not speak what thus saith the Lord when that's the description of your job? Okay, that God, that his spirit bubbles up in you, and you speak what thus saith the Lord. You know, how can you be, you know, all that and a bag of chips, and you're holding back on God? Now, there are times when God is going to have you keep your mouth closed. And at those times, that's the time you start talking when God's telling you to be quiet. And so you got it backwards. When it's time, when God says, be still, be still. When he says, speak, speak. When he's telling you to speak, stop being still when he tells you to speak. And when he tells you to be still, stop speaking when he's telling you to shut your face. Okay? Because you're talking out of turn. You're talking and, and giving uh, the mysteries of God in places that you're not even supposed to be doing it. Okay? There's an assignment for the word that he's given you. And it's, there's a, a landing pad for that word to be nourished and to, to go forth, and you're missing the mark, the Lord is saying, this is all being downloaded to me right now, I hadn't even thought about this before, you are missing the mark 
of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can. You fancy yourself a prophet and you fancy yourself opening your mouth. Hallelujah. And speaking. You got that one down. But the Lord is saying you're opening your mouth too much in places where I haven't told you to say what you're saying. So come on. He's got to reel you back. Okay. Hallelujah. And make every word that he's given you poignant powerful, decisive, because you've given that word in the place that he's assigned you to give it. Praise God. Amen. What if Noah started building, started started building, a, um, you know, the, just the old ark, the kind of way he wanted to build it. He took heed to what God was telling him. He did it specifically according, you know, to the plan of God. What would that, that ark have looked like if he hadn't done it exactly the way, you know, that God had told him to do holes here? How well know, would it have how floated? How well yeah. would it have floated? You know, come on now. He's talking about saving lives here. And that's what God is using you to do, to save lives. You may not mm -hmm. think of it as saving lives, but the word and the power that God has given you and put in your mouth is to save lives, to bring people to life and not to death. And that's what we see Noah doing, saving a whole, not only, a, not only he saved humanity, didn't he? Him and his family saved humanity. And that's, you know, it's never, your assignment is never, is, is, I mean, it's the same assignment, okay? Even though God used him in an ark to do it, praise God, your assignment is to save lives, to bring lives, to bring life, the life of Christ, you know, into the world. Praise God, you are saving lives. So you must take more, uh, he must pay more attention, hallelujah, to those things that God has already said in his word and that he's going to give you specifically to do. We're talking about specific assignments from God and having the faith to carry that assignment out no matter what. Take more earnest heed, hallelujah, to what God is saying uh, in these days. He's coming now. He's coming with some plans. He's coming with some blueprints. Okay, he's coming with some ideas. He's coming with some witty inventions. He's coming. If he hasn't started already, he's coming. Hallelujah. He's summoning you into this place. Hallelujah. Of, of a greater communion with him. Hallelujah. So that he can trust you. Now, we talked a lot about you trusting God. We haven't talked today about God trusting you because God wants to trust you like he trusted Noah. Okay, to do what he has assigned you to do. Can God trust you today? Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. Hallelujah. If you, you're walking in that impossible uh, place, in that place of lack of faith, you're not pleasing God. Okay? Because the Word says it. I have that from the Word. That's what the Word says. Praise God. And so it's not just, you know, uh, we're not talking to babies here. We're talking to mature uh, men and women of God. Mature. Hallelujah. So in your maturity now, understand where we're going with this. And you know what I'm talking about. You know where you are. Find your place in this world, word and allow God to bring you to the next level. Stop denying. Stop shaking your head. When the Holy Spirit uh, convicts you and moves upon you, the conviction is not for you to go and run and hide somewhere in shame. I rebuke mm -hmm. the spirit of shame right now. I rebuke the spirit of blame. God is not blaming you, and I'm not blaming you. The man of God is not blaming you. We're, we're bringing you to a place, a higher place in God, a higher knowledge of God. Hallelujah. So that, that, so that he can move in you the way that he wants and needs to move in you, through you, and by you. So uh, come away from the crocodile, uh, crocodile tears. We rebuke the spirit of pity. Well, and all those excuses, well, this happened to me, that happened to me. You know, they did this to me. They did that to me. We rebuke all that in the name of Jesus because you've repented already because you've forgiven them, okay? You've forgiven them for all that stuff that have gone on in your life. And now what the Lord is saying, he's giving you an even playing field. No more excuses. No more excuses. Praise God. And we serve a loving God. And I may not sound too loving this morning, but I want you to know that this is the love of God pouring forth from me to you. Praise God. We love you. God loves you. Come on. Come on up. Come on up to this higher place. Jesus is calling you. Come up here. It's awesome up here. The view is fabulous. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So, back to Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Noah prepared the ark. By this, his faith which relied on God, he passed judgment and sentence on the world's unbelief mm -hmm. and became an heir and possessor of righteousness. Praise God. Okay, let's stop right there before you get on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Noah received the, the title from God, perfect. Noah was perfect. 
And it says here that God passed judgment and sentence on the world. Okay? On the world's unbelief. On, on the world's unbelief. Come on now. <laughs> so, here we go again. God is saying that without faith it's impossible to please him. Without trust it's impossible to please him. But all things are possible with God. So when you deal in unbelief, you're dealing in an impossible situation. All right. But look at what God says here. He says that he passed judgment on unbelief. Praise God. The whole world's unbelief. They didn't believe God. They didn't accept God. They didn't want God. Okay. But God passed judgment on that. Praise God. And so I am not going to, to, to state the obvious. Okay. That God is passing judgment on you. I'm not going to state that. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> But this is the judgment that God has seen where you are. Praise God. We have this covenant with Christ Jesus that we are standing in grace now. Praise God. And so what God is saying is that you as a prophet, as Noah, okay, was a prophet, God is calling you to an assignment to pass judgment on unbelief in the world. And you know how he's going to use you with the new covenant to pass judgment? You're going to see, hallelujah, that there's unbelief, but God is going to use you as his faith tool, as his belief tool. To, to, to bring belief where there's unbelief, okay? Praise God, to bring life where there's death, okay? Noah didn't have the authority, the creative authority. He had the anointing to, to believe and to do, to take heed to God and do exactly what God had told him to do. But Noah in and, in and of himself, praise God, to speak life to someone, that wasn't necessarily his call. But guess whose call that is? That's your call <laughs> through Christ Jesus. Praise God, hallelujah, to now, to bring life, uh, to bring faith, to bring God, to bring his truth, to bring his love in a lost and dying world. And so God is going to use you to judge it. You're going to see it. You're going to know where it is, but he's going to send you in there to cause unbelief to dissipate, to dissipate and dissolve, because you now are going to be bringing the faith, the true faith, the true trust in God, hallelujah, to a lost and dying world, people who have been abandoned. Okay, hallelujah, been abandoned, you know, people who have been hurt, people who have been down, people who have never even known the Lord, people who are in sin, I mean really deep in sin, hallelujah, God is bringing you and calling you to judge that stuff, but with the judgment, praise God, comes the power now through Christ Jesus to erase that junk out of the lives of people so that they can believe on, adhere to, and accept. Hallelujah. And trust in the God that you trust in in the same way that you do. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> that I'm, just, awesome. I'm just thinking of the depth of that mm -hmm. uh, phrase that the mm -hmm. Amplified uses here. Uh, you know, do you understand that unbelief, he, he passed judgment and sentence on the world's unbelief. Yes. And at the same time, became an heir and possessor of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Without unbelief. You know, a lot of times we look at our friends and like, well, maybe they don't know as much. Maybe they didn't have the opportunity mm -hmm. that I had. Maybe they're just doing this or that. Uh, you know, but if we start to look at ourselves and our friends and the people around us as people that have made a decision not to believe God. Yes. Hmm. That puts them on shaky ground. <laughs> wow, I'll say. <laughs> that puts them on a fearful ground mm -hmm. in the hands of an angry God. Yes. You know, this is serious stuff that we're talking about it today. Really it's it's an amazing concept because we've we've talked about unbelief like it was uh, an option. I know. We've talked about <laughs> unbelief like it was, oops, you know. Uh, you know, the Catholic Church talked about the different levels of sin. Maybe, yeah. you know, what are they called? Uh, uh, venial, I mean, yeah, different levels of different sin. Mortal and, and, sin, venial yeah, sin, yeah. and others, yeah. So, this is a big one. You know, this is not a little one. Yeah. This is not I'm scratching your, <laughs> you know, a scratch on your leg. This is this is piercing your soul. Yes. This is piercing your very body to un to have unbelief. And you come oh. too far in the Lord, leaning on God. You come too far in God to stop now. All right? To, to, to say, oh, this is enough right here. No, there's more. There's always more. Glory to glory, faith to faith, eternally, eternally. Praise God. God has something, a fresh mercy every single day, a fresh knowledge every day. And eternally, you'll still never get it all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because God is way more ahead of us. Okay, way. 
And so, you know, as we lean into God, as we push into God, as we lean on Him and abandon ourselves to Him, we may as well just tie into that eternal, un that eternal knot, that eternal anointing, that eternal grace. It is eternal. That's what Christ gave us. This is the gift that God, that God gave us through Christ Jesus. Uh, the gift to the world is eternal life. And so we are incorporating eternal life in this message because faith, you know, you cannot have that eternal life unless you're operating in faith 24-7, 365. Come on. Hallelujah. If that's where it is. Praise God. It's not enough just to have faith to get saved. It's not enough to just have faith, you know, to receive the call that God has called you into. There are more callings. There are other callings. There are greater callings. Even Paul, after he had been anointed as apostle, got another calling to go in another direction. Even Peter got another calling from God to go in another way, another direction. Hallelujah. That was to preach to the Gentiles, okay? When he had that tremendous trance from God and God began to speak to him. So there are always new avenues, always new doors, always new levels, always. Do you hear what I'm saying? As long as you are breathing in this earth and for eternity, we don't know what's exactly going to happen after we pass this earth, but we know that we are hooked up, joined or co-joined with Christ eternally. So we may as well start living that eternity right now, right? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just wanted to it. pause for a minute and, and talk uh, not an in-depth study, certainly, mm -hmm. but how do we increase our faith? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jude 20 says, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, mm -hmm. praying at all times in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's one way, praying in your heavenly language. We get built up on the inner man. Hallelujah. Uh, if we go to was it Romans where he talks about um, faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the Word of God, mm -hmm. right? And that's actually the revelation of God, the, the rhema of God. So we need to speak the word. We need to understand. And sometimes, even as we're reading our Bible, the Lord gives us a fresh revelation. And to me, that's a speaking as well. Amen. There's that fresh revelation of the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Even if you go all the way back to you know, the book of Joshua uh, 1 8, mm -hmm. you know, if you'll meditate on my word day and night to do all the things that I've commanded you, you will have good success. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will be with you. Praise God. So we've got to meditate on his word. We've got to get revelation mm -hmm. and we've got to pray in the spirit. And we are building yep. ourselves up in our most holy faith. Yep. Our spirit is valuable. <laughs> Hallelujah. We act like we're born again and that, you know, we, we, we punched our ticket to heaven. And, and that's, this faith that we have is so much more valuable than a ticket to heaven. It's going to pay for your dining car, for your food. It's going to pay for your transportation and your luggage to the next way. It's going to pay for all kinds of things all along the way. Praise God. We're going to need our faith in this sojourn, in this walk. Hallelujah, for the rest of our life. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, a, a starting point and then we're done with faith. Mm -hmm. No, this is a faith walk. Mm -hmm. This is a faith fulfillment. Mm -hmm. This is a faith truth mm -hmm. that we are to walk in faith. Mm -hmm. And then your favorite verse, what did Jesus do by faith? <laughs> he did. He said what he heard the Father say. And he did what he saw the Father do. So he every died. day, he's every operating moment, total he's trust operating in faith. Faith and trust in God, absolutely. Praise God. So we're looking at these these prophets, these ministers' lives as a, a, a big point in their life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But it's a walk of faith. Mm -hmm. It's it's an every day. We need faith daily. We need yes. faith all day yes, long. We do. Hallelujah. Yes, we yeah, do. we're 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 giving these great highlights. <laughs> Hallelujah. And these were powerful <laughs> acts of faith. And and there may be one point in your life that supersedes all the rest mm -hmm. that one day that you make a decision how to do the first decision you made was to follow Jesus Amen. how to do there may be another day in your ministry where that day decides your future mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. today might be the day that makes a difference in the rest of your life yes. hallelujah yes. we want you to make a decision by faith Amen. we want us to walk in faith today. Amen. 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 Praise yes, God. today. Because today, now, therefore, faith is. Now, faith is. Praise God. And Jonathan, as Jonathan was talking about faith, you know, the, the place that you're in now and doing all those things, you know, for faith. And we know that faith comes by hearing, the scripture tells us, and by hearing the word of God. 
And so we are increasing our faith even now as we are hearing the word. And God has put, you know, a special ingredient, an anointing, an impartation, you know, for us to increase through continually hearing, you know, his word. And so even though we, we use that term faith, we use it so cavalier, you know, but it's, it's really powerful and it's really deep as you explore the definition of how we can ascertain faith and how we can operate in faith and how we can keep faith on a daily basis. Praise God. And so uh, we want to anchor you and the Holy Spirit wants to anchor you in the knowledge you know, going forward, that faith is an everyday walk in God, as the man of God said. And so uh, having trust in God, trusting God, okay, it's one thing, you know, to do what he says, you know, that he wants you to do, to do that. But there's another level, another depth to your faith that comes in the area of trusting him no matter what. Now, here's the thing. Trusting God, you know, something, you trust God, you have faith in him, but something happens that's contrary to his word in your life. You know, uh, someone is stricken with ill health or, you know, whatever it is uh, that, 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 that happens is contrary to the word of God. God says he's a healer, but hey, they're not healed yet. So what's going on here? And so there's been a delay in the deliverance, the healing, whatever it is, you know, there's been a delay. All right. And so trust means that you know that you know no matter how long the delay is, no matter what it is that's going on, the sickness, the finances, everything caving in on you, hallelujah, that's contrary to the word of God, contrary to what God says, uh, who God says you are to be and what he has brought in your life. And no matter how hard that situation is, no matter how long it takes, no matter how long you're in that delay, praise God, trust means that I know my God. You know, he's, uh, got this. he's got this. Okay, <laughs> nice my God is God. I trust God. I trust him in this place. It's not just, and it's not just a spoken trust. You hear what I'm saying? It's a trust that's in your heart, a peace that's in your heart, that no matter what, I trust my God to get me out of this. Hallelujah. But, and the thing is that we have people say, you know, um, you know, God is going to deliver. You know, God will heal. God is able. God is able. But even in saying that God is able, there's a hint of mistrust and, and, and faith, lack of faith in that, you know, in that statement. Because, you know, we know that God is able and he is not disabled for you to say that he's able. You understand what I'm saying? Able, God's ability is 100%. You know, 24, 7, 365. And so there's a place of rest that God wants your heart to be in that no matter what you're going through, you trust him. You trust him and you know who he is. You know his character. You know how he operates. And you know that it's got to be something else going on here because it's not God. You're not going to blame God, okay, for someone dying on you, okay? You're not going to blame God. You know, for that, that, uh, the, you know, the, the, what, the rug being pulled out from under you, losing your house, losing your car, you know, losing your family, losing your friends. When I'm talking about devastating stuff, okay, I'm talking about some devastating stuff that's going to come to test your trust in God. And so you maintain a level of trust and faith in God no matter what. You don't sink in any way. Now, the enemy is going to come and tempt you. He's going to tempt you to throw in the towel. You hear what I'm saying? He's going to tempt you to let down on your love and your trust in God. He's going to tempt you, you know, have pity parties. God, where are you? You know what? You know what's up with you, God? You know, you know, uh-uh, none of that. Total 100%. On the top, top level of trust in God that no matter what goes, goes on, you're in peace. No matter how long it goes on, you are in peace in the trust of who God is. His nature doesn't change. Even though circumstances in your life change, God's nature doesn't change. And that's the kind of trust that we have in him, that he's a God of love, he's a God of peace. And that if something else is going on that's contrary to his word, you know he's got it and you know who your God is. You know who you serve no matter what the enemy is bringing against you. You do not take down. You hear what I'm saying? You don't step back. You step forward in the trial. You hear what I'm saying? You step forward in God. And that is the trial of your faith. It is just a trial to see so you can see what you're made of. Okay? And the longer the trial, the more power. I say that's going to come out at the end of it. You know? You want to say something, babe? Well, it's like Psalm 23. You, you, 
the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yes. And later mm -hmm. on, he talks about walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. I will fear no evil. And there are times we want our faith to increase. And the Lord says, this time, I'm going to have you wait. Oh, yeah. This time, I'm going to have you... Mm -hmm. Trust me, mm. even when it doesn't seem like the answer Ooh, is yes. right there. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. This time, <laughs> you need to know the deeper levels of faith. Yes. And to keep on having faith in spite of the yes. circumstances. Mm -hmm. And Jesus did that, if you recall, with Lazarus. His Lazarus, uh, Mary and Martha, sent word to the disciples. And what happened? What Jesus, that he's sick unto death. Mm -hmm. Lazarus is sick unto death. Come heal him. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the answers. You are life. They mm -hmm. believe God. They believe that God was there if if God was right there now. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the whole, the thought of God going further, taking well, us Jesus into the that. valley mm -hmm. of the shadow of death uh, and still trusting him. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, you know, and the psalmist said, I, I'm going to prepare a meal for you mm -hmm. in the presence of your enemies. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So he ta yeah, sometimes amen. take us to a dark place to reveal even greater faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and so, so what amen. happens here, Jesus hears that these people he really, really loved. Love Martha, love Mary, love Lazarus. Love, love them. them to pieces. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he had the ability to make us all think we were his favorite. But, <laughs> hallelujah. I'm his favorite. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and so... He you waits for two days, mm -hmm. and by the time he gets there, he's but he waits and for he two says days. he's but asleep. What's going on while he's waiting for two days? The disciples, what, what's happening for two days? You know, when he talks to the disciples, you okay. tell me. No, no, Ned. Then when he tells it, you know, oh, he's sleeping. He said he's sleeping. He said he's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> and they get there. Lord. And he says, sleeping, he's sleeping, and the disciples don't really get it yet. Yeah, get the metaphor. You know? And he finally <laughs> says, oh, he's dead, okay? He's dead. <laughs> Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. He's been in the tomb for several days. But Jesus knew that he was dead. For two, Jesus knew that he was dead and did not go right away. Now, there's a reason why there was a something it, going on in the I've culture. felt that situation before. <laughs> Have you ever felt right? that situation before? <laughs> that you had a desperate moment, and you needed God to move, and he's like, I'll be there soon enough. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no! no, 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 no. <laughs> I need him now! Well, he says, yeah, but I can still fix this. I can still, Ray, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, on me, will understand resurrection power. How do, we don't like waiting. We don't like move, trusting in God. But if you really want to know God's character, you'll not only see him now, but also in a couple of days, move in power. For there's nothing that he can't overcome. Hallelujah. Where's your level of faith? Is it only for the right now? Mm -hmm. Or is it also mm -hmm. for your future? Yes. Is it also yes. that God can move oh. in a couple of days? Amen. Hallelujah. So if you knew the difference between life and death and life, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was only a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Could you hang out just a little bit longer? Oh, could you hold on just a little bit tighter? Oh, how do, that sounds like a love song. <laughs> Praise <laughs> so, God. So uh, why did Jesus wait the Ford? What, but, it, but he revealed that he's not only the healer, but the resurrection and the life. And when he said, come forth, Lazarus, he came out of that grave. What Amen. do you want to add? No, I just wanted to add that in the culture of that time, they believed that when people died, that their spirit stayed around them for three days. Okay, that was the culture. But Jesus waited, and he waited to the fourth day to come. Okay? And travel so, time. To travel yeah. time. He was there after four days. And so now the Jews can't say that because he knew he was he knew what he was going to do. But now they couldn't say, oh well, his spirit was 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 still lurking around there. So when Jesus called him up out of his grave, you know, oh, it was because his spirit was still there. Jesus waited on that fourth day, okay, to overcome the culture of the time that said that you know, uh, spirit, your spirit stayed around you three days. He wanted to make sure that when this miracle happened, that it was no question that it was truly a raising from the dead. He knew what he was going to do, what he was purposed to do, you know, when he got there. But he wept over Lazarus, didn't oh, he? Absolutely. He wept bitterly, you know, mm -hmm. over that situation. He said he cried, he said he wept. He wept yeah. bitterly. So, um, praise God. You're going to have to excuse me for a minute. I'll be back. You didn't finish your story. <laughs> He's going to come back and finish that for you. 
praise God, the story of Lazarus. Well, let, let's just go into that a little bit while we're waiting for him to come back. So what was going on, you know, at this particular time? Jesus, Jesus waited, okay, four days. This man had died and he was in the tomb for four days. And even when he got there, Mary said, Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died, you know. Um, and, uh, and so the word came forth. Well, I, you know, and uh, the word about the resurrection, okay, that Jesus told her that, well, I am the resurrection and the life. And so what was going on and what we see here in this story is a wait, okay, Lazarus, he was sick unto death, he died, and Jesus waited before he came. He had been in the tomb for four days, and as he was going to the tomb, Mary said, look, he, by now he stinks, okay, he's been out there for four days, praise God, but here we have if Jesus had have been there, Lazarus wouldn't have died in the first place. They know Jesus as a healer. They know Jesus as a deliverer. They were counting on him, you know, in their faith in that particular realm. And they had faith for him to do his assignments of bringing life, I mean, uh, bringing deliverance and help in that realm. But Jesus waited out, okay? Now, what is going on? He is now going to perform a miracle that's going to increase their faith and bring them into another realm that not only is he the healer, not only is he the deliverer, but now the, the faith to raise the dead is another level. Do you see that? The wait had purpose. The four days that he waited out before he came to Lazarus had purpose. Now, Lazarus was sick. He died. He went through that whole process. He was buried in a tomb. I mean, in a cave. They had to remove the rock. And Jesus called him forth. And Lazarus came out of, you know, the grave alive. Okay? So, what I'm saying to you is that there is another level of faith, another level of anointing. You believe God is a healer. You're walking in that level of faith. But there's another level of faith that sometimes happens in the wait. Another level of grace that sometimes happens in the delay. Okay? That God is working in you. Another authority, another anointing. And he's got this thing all worked out. So you may think it's a delay. On your level, it may be a delay, but it's not a delay with God. We hate delays, don't we? Okay, we hate waiting. Praise God. But we know that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Praise God. And so, look at every situation that you're in as an opportunity for God to glorify himself in your life. For God to give you another level of anointing. For God to give you another level of truth. For God to anchor himself in you in ways that you hadn't been anchored. So if you if you enter into the delay, if you enter into the, the wait, if you enter into the fight, one of the things that I teach is to love the fight, love the process. Love it because during this process, hallelujah, during this time, God is building in you another level of his, um, how can I say, another level of his grace and his authority in your life. He's bringing you more and more of his presence during this time. And so what we want to encourage you uh, today to do is to trust God no matter what. Faith is trusting him and totally abandoning yourself to him and his processes. That you're not looking back. You're not taking down in your attitude. You're not getting upset. You're not getting angry. You know that whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that's happening to you is an opportunity. An opportunity for God to train you, to teach you, to bring you to the next echelon, the next level. Can you imagine that? Losing your brother and you know someone that has the authority to heal him? Okay, and he, because that, because Jesus wasn't there, Lazarus died, your brother died, your mother died, your father died, hallelujah, but God is bringing you to another level, hallelujah, of weight, another level, hallelujah, of time where it's not really a weight like you think it's a weight, it's not really a delay like you think it's a delay, it's not a delay at all, because God is working his mechanisms in you, his methodology in you, okay, his patterns in you, his truth is developing in you, his power is developing in you because of your faith. He's building up your faith to bring you to that next place that when you call a Lazarus out of the grave, he will come forth. He's calling you to that kind of authority. He's calling you to that kind of power, raising the dead. You hear what I'm saying? Raise, speaking the dead alive again. 
Hallelujah. Whether it's a spiritual death or whether it's a physical death, God has assigned you to walk the way Jesus walked. God has assigned you to talk the way that Jesus talked. God has assigned you the glory that Christ had in the earth. He said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Heal the sick, raise the dead. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Cast out devils. <laughs> Praise God. Cleanse the lepers. That's our assignment. Praise God. And he's building you up in your most holy faith. If you look at everything in your life, everything that's ever happened to you, that's happening to you right now, that will be happening to you in the future, as Jesus walking alongside of you, teaching you, giving you instruction, Hallelujah. Increasing you in your knowledge, increasing you in your faith so that you will be anchored in that trust in him, confidence in that trust in him that you can conform to his image. You can conform to the image of perfection. Noah uh, was a perfect a man of God in that he heeded everything that God told him to do and he did it to the letter. Do you have that grace right now? Do you have that anointing right now? Praise God. Do you have it in your heart? Praise God that no matter where he tells you to go, I will go. No matter what he tells you to do, you say, I will do it because I fully trust in him. I fully trust in my God. Hallelujah. I am yielding myself and abandoning everything, letting go of all of that stuff, hallelujah, that would keep me in excuses, that would keep me down. I'm letting it go and I'm giving it over to him to use it in any way that he wants to use it to develop me to the place where I can keep on moving and keep on growing. Okay, faith is active. Faith is moving. Faith is powerful, you know, in that you don't have faith that stands still, okay? It's an active, you know, movement of the glory of God continually in your life on a daily basis. Trusting God is a continuation continually, every day, trusting him, every day, having confidence in him, not letting down, not taking down, not making excuses, not having pity parties, but going forth, not looking at others, seeing what they have and what you don't have, okay, and becoming jealous, okay, becoming envious of what other people are doing and you're not doing. That's not what this is all about. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. As God has given us uh, examples you know, of the great men of faith, praise God. The thing that he says about Noah, praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go back to what he said about Noah. Prompted by faith, prompted by trust, prompted by confidence in God. Hallelujah. Being forewarned by God concerning events of which as yet there was no visible sign. And God is using you to let you know about things ahead of time for, for which there's no visible sign at this time. He took heed to God, listened to him, listened to God, heard what God had to say, and diligently, okay, diligently <laughs> took heed and he diligently, after he heard God, listened to God, what God had to say, he made it his business every day, every second of the day, to do what it is that God had assigned him to do, to do what it is that God had called him to do, and he did it respectfully, in awe, in reverence of God. He constructed and he prepared an ark for the deliverance of his own family. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, praise God. We thank God, hallelujah, that faith is moving, our faith is moving, and that we know that now we want to please God. And so, since the opposite is true, that without faith it's impossible to please God, so then the opposite of that is true as well, that with faith is possible to please God. And so we want to increase our pleasure in God, his pleasure in us. We want God to take pleasure in the fact that he created us, in the fact that he ordained us, in the fact that he sent us out to do his will. We want God to take pleasure in us because we trust in him. Hallelujah. We totally and completely have confidence in in all that he's given, you know, us to do. Praise God. And so, thank you, Lord. So, we see Christ, as we look uh, into the image of Christ, we see Christ operating in such marvelous miracles, such marvelous signs and wonders. 
and his signs and wonders according to the word uh, bespoke who he was. When John the Baptist sent message to him saying, are you the one? Are you the Messiah? Or are we to wait for another? You know, God, Jesus said, well, look at the miracles that I do. Praise God. And, and so we have here, you know, the Son of God in this earth performing works of miracles, okay? Praise God. Performing the very works of God as his calling card, you know, as his, um, how can I say, his uh, business card is, hey, Jesus Christ, I work miracles. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. That was his calling card and his proof that he was sent of God. Praise the Lord. What is your calling card and what is your proof that you're sent of God? Praise God. And these are some of the things that you can ask God. Hallelujah. What uh, is it that defines God in you? All right. And if you are not coming up to the image of Christ, the image of Christ, that, the image that God has given us, okay, uh, in Christ, hallelujah, then this is your area of prayer. This is your area of intercession. This is your area of direction. This is the direction that God is moving you into as you are conforming to the image of Christ. And his image is, you know, that this is what I do. I do miracles. Hey, <laughs> I do them. I am the miracle. I, that's what I do. That's my call. I've been assigned to do that, among other things. But we're talking about this particular thing today. <laughs> Praise God. And so conforming to his image, he said, you know, that he, we're going to do the works that he does. I said, how on earth are we going to work the works of Christ? Praise God, when we don't have the faith that Christ has. You know, when we are not doing what it is that God told us to do, when he tells us to do it. Praise God. And so all of this information, all of the word is tying in for you. It's all connected. It's all interconnected. You know, you guys want to look for miracles and look for signs and wonders, but you don't want to abandon yourself to, to Christ or to God to get them. Praise God. Christ was in total, um, total trust of God, total faith in God, abandoned all he was, you know, let go of all that he was in his deity and became a man, put carnality on him, on himself, okay? Oh, hallelujah, humanity on himself, because being the son of man and the son of God, Praise God, but all that he did for us, he did it as a son of man to show us the way. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it's easier, you know, for us to, to go out and ask God for a miracle, you know, and pray for miracles, you know, than it is to trust God uh, for us to be a mirror of his nature. Than for us to, to trust God enough for us to carry the nature of Christ into the world. Because the nature of Christ is obedience you know, to God. The nature of Christ is, 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 is to be in total and complete communication with God, doing what God said uh, for him to do and, and, and doing what he, God showed him to do. And that was the trust that Christ had in God. But we will trust, okay, you know, to ask God for a miracle, but not to, uh, for God to enable us to do the miracle ourselves, okay, through the nature of Christ. Now, we know, you know, that the bedrock, Okay, the foundation of the power that Christ has is in operating in the way that God had assigned him to operate. Doing the miracles that he did, okay, was based in the fact that he had totally abandoned himself to belief, okay, in God, to trust in God, to faith in God. Hallelujah. And so without that bedrock or without that foundation, hallelujah, praise God. What would it have been like if God, Jesus would have stood there and argued with God about what God was showing him to do or what God was telling him to do? Praise God. Would as many of people have been healed and delivered? Would, we, would he have, would, would we even be here today if Christ had not carried out the assignment of God to the letter? So it is in my believing that God is and that he's a reward, rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's how we can carry his nature. It is in our believing, hallelujah, believing that we can abandon ourselves to total trust in him and totally, you know, immerse ourselves in the character of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and yield ourselves, praise God, to his nature. And that's what we're learning, you know, how to do every day, every day, to yield to uh, the, and conform to uh, imitating 
Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And to come into this place of absolute abandonment of ourselves, uh, absolute trust, absolute no iota of mistrust or unbelief anywhere in this stream of love that we have now given the Father as he has given us his love, sending his only begotten son, hallelujah. He so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son into the world that we might have life and have that life more abundantly. Jesus was sent for your abundant life. In that abundant life comes, hallelujah, the assignment to totally and completely trust God, to totally and completely believe him and believe his words as Christ did. And that is the vision that we have of the Christ today. We are focusing in on his total and complete abandonment, hallelujah, of his deity to become a man, hallelujah, and totally trust the Father with every step that he took, everything that he said, hallelujah, everything that he did, God showed him and spoke to him, and that's exactly what Christ did, hallelujah. And so as we look at that picture of Christ, as we see him, Praise God, walking and talking and being who God had assigned him to be according to the plan that was made thousands of years ahead of time. God had a plan from the very beginning, from the garden. God had a plan to bring Christ into the earth for us. According to God's plan, Christ walked it out. We see Christ doing what God told him to do in every instance. Praise God. And so as we look at that picture, that methodology, that um, relationship that Jesus had with the Father, that is where we are going. That is where we must be. That is the stance that we must take. Hallelujah. To be, to have no loose ends in our faith, to have no loose ends in our trust, to be devoted to you know, to the purposes and the plans of God. And that's what we see in Noah today, the devotion that he had to the purposes and the plans of God, his diligence and his reverence, you know, for this place of devotion that he had assigned to God, his father. Oh, hallelujah. And so God is calling you into this place. He's summoning you, hallelujah, to a place of absolute trust and absolute abandonment hallelujah, into his things and into his ways, hallelujah. And you're going to find that this absolute trust in God, this absolute abandonment and faith in him, hallelujah, is the place, is the product, okay, hallelujah, or the miracles that you're going to do in the ministry, the great ministry, hallelujah, that God is going to give you is a product of your total trust in God, praise God, hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? that we don't work the miracles by ourselves, we don't preach by ourselves, we don't teach by ourselves, hallelujah, that we do it the way that he's assigned us to do it, and that is, hallelujah, the anchor for us, hallelujah, that we believe that wholeheartedly, praise God, and that God will reward us for that belief, for that trust, and for that faith in him, praise God, and so the product, hallelujah, of what the extraordinary miracles are in your life is the abandonment trust abandonment and trust abandonment and trust hallelujah hallelujah praise God hallelujah so we trust God because of his character because he we know who he is we understand who he is and we have faith that he cannot change his character of love his character of peace his character of healing his character of joy hallelujah it, it doesn't change and so that's why we can anchor ourselves in it Okay, oh hallelujah, that's why we can have total trust in it. He doesn't change, hallelujah. And so the strength of our trust in him is the fact that he is a reliable God in his character and in his personality. Have you ever had someone that you trusted but they weren't really too reliable? <laughs> hallelujah, they betrayed your trust. God will never, never betray the trust that you put in him. In fact, the strength of your trust in him is based on the strength of the fact that he cannot change, that he, you know, he is forever the same. He will not change. We may change, but he's not going to change. I don't care what's going on in your life. 
you know, I see you pounding on the door, you know, pounding on the door of heaven. Praise God. No matter what's going on in your life, I don't care. God does not change. And that door will open for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. As God is teaching you and bringing you to a place of, uh, of his, of his choosing. Hallelujah. Mm, praise God. And so we bless the Lord today. We bless the Lord on your behalf as he's summoning you and calling you to come up higher, to come up here, to come up to this other place that he has, another place that he has for you. Hallelujah. In this unending, hallelujah, unending walk of faith that we have, in this energetic, okay, perpetual walk of faith that we have in him as God is perpetuating himself on the inside of us. Hallelujah. And, and replicating himself uh, in us through Christ Jesus as we are learning how to walk in that perfection, the perfection that is God himself, as Jesus commanded us to do, to be ye perfect, therefore, as your Father in heaven is perfect. As Jesus has given us that assignment, we're taking that assignment on, praise God, and we're looking at every avenue and every way, hallelujah, that we can be the perfect vessel of God in this earth in the same way that Christ was and is the perfect vessel of God in this earth. Hallelujah. We have a leader. We have a mentor. We have one to follow into the, the steps of perfection. And his epitaph is that I say what I hear him say and I do what I see him do. Hallelujah. The prince of this world comes, but he has nothing in me. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. So the summons come. The Lord is calling you. He's calling you to this greater place. Let down your misgivings. Let down your lack of faith. Let down your, oh, we could never do that. Okay, I, I don't have the power. I don't have the authority to do that. Let go of all of that and abandon yourself totally to the stream, to the flow, you know, of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. God is streaming himself in you, through you, and by you. Praise God. And he wants you uh, to walk in that place. And if it were not so, he would not be calling you to do it. Okay? Jesus wouldn't call you to raise the dead, heal the sick, preach the gospel if it were not possible to do it. Okay? To cleanse the lepers. He gave you a directive and God meant for that directive to come to pass in you, through you, and by you. Yeah, you. Absolutely you. Why not you? Praise God. Okay? And so... We're going to talk a little bit in closing, and we're going to pray again about some of the stuff that we talked about yesterday, you know, as far as abandonment issues are concerned. And, um, and I even had a dream about abandonment last night, of being left again, you know. And so uh, God is speaking to me about how strong uh, this particular wall has been uh, in the lives of uh, his people, as keeping them from totally and completely trusting in him because of the walls you know, that the enemy has put up in your, in your heart and in, on your soul because of the things that you've been through, and especially abandonment, rejection, abandonment, okay, all of these things, hallelujah, um, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, let's just wait on the Lord a minute and see what else he has to say in this particular area, because this is, God is ministering right now through, oh, there's an anointing that's coming forth right now as you are drawing uh, this grace out of me, the Lord is, is yielding it to you. There's a, a strong uh, deliverance that's needed uh, in this particular area in the body of Christ. Praise God. And you hear uh, the spirit of abandonment. You hear it and you see it uh, in the body of Christ. And you see it a lot. And you, you'll hear uh, junior ministers, you know, talking about how um, and complaining about how their pastors won't give them an opportunity to prophesy or to preach or to do this and how the, the uh, senior leader is holding them back. And then you see the senior leaders for no reason at all other than that you understand or that you can see really holding people back because they don't understand them and they don't, they don't see them. They don't, you know, they don't get what they're doing and um, you know, acting through sometimes ignorance but sometimes through the spirit of control. And so not only do you see the abandonment issues in the people who have been rejected, but you see those issues operating through the leaders who are rejecting people because they've been rejected. Okay, I've even heard a leader say, well, they did it to me, you know, I, I got the same kind of treatment, you know, from uh, the leaders, you know, as I was coming out, so I'm going to treat you the same way, you know. And so 
it perpetuates itself. It keeps going and it keeps going. And we have generations of leaders and ministers, you know, in the body of Christ that God has assigned, that God has called, hallelujah, that don't have um, an understanding or a platform, you know, in order to do what God has assigned them to do. Because heretofore, the platform has been the church. Okay? And so we have walking wounded. We have festering sores of our wounded, uh, our wounded soldiers here in the body of Christ. But it's not just the ones who are being rejected, it's the ones who are doing the rejecting as well, okay? And, and it comes and it stems from abandonment, okay? I'm not talking about the kind of abandonment that you need to totally abandon yourself to God. We're talking about being left, father issues, father not there, okay? Uh, being misunderstood, you know, being left, okay, foundling spirits, you know, being left at the door as a family, not being taken care of, not being loved, okay, and so these are the issues, you know, and the wall that God is going to break down in the body of Christ, praise God, as we learn more and more what our assignments are and what he's called us to do and who he's called us to be, he is gearing us up now in deliverance and setting us free from rejection and from abandonment and not just you know uh, what's happening to us right now but the source of it God is going in to pull out the root of it in the body of Christ this is a wall that the enemy has built up against the people of God because he knows if he can keep you down in rejection and abandonment you'll never understand how you are to abandon yourself to God because the, the, the abandonment issues that you have, the fear that you have, the mistrust that you have, the hurt that you've gone through, the trauma that you've gone through, how you've been used and abused and misused and abused, hallelujah, is causing a wall for, that is impenetrable to you, okay? Because most of the time you don't even know that this wall is there. Praise God. But God knows that it's there. And he sent an assignment of archer angels to shoot arrows of deliverance. Hallelujah. And he sent his breaker angels now to break down these walls. Hallelujah. To break down the wall of rejection. To break down the wall of abandonment in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And to stop the perpetuation, the proliferation and the per, uh, and uh, of uh, this kind of treatment of others so not only is god delivering us hallelujah as individuals he's delivering the leaders he's delivering the entire body of christ of this demonic force okay this demonic wall that has held us back that has kept us into the inner workings of god that has kept us out of the inner courts of god because we've been afraid to trust him the way that we need to trust him because we've had trust issues from way back. The people that we put our trust in, our lives in, abandoned us, rejected us, treated us badly, church hurt, okay, um, and all that kind of uh, um, stuff that comes along with, you know, with those kinds of things that happen to you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Father. We glorify your holy name. Oh, hallelujah. Offense. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for, the offenses. All right. And so through the, uh, through the abandonment issues and the rejection issues, you've abandoned and rejected other people. Hallelujah. And as a result of that, the spirit of offense has taken uh, up abode in the body of Christ. And many have been offended. Okay. But God is going way back to the source now, going way back into our background. Hallelujah. And breaking down that wall. Hallelujah, that's keeping you from entering into this next level of trust and abandonment in God. Hallelujah, abandonment issues in the natural has kept you from abandoning yourself spiritually to God and going forth in God. Those abandonment and hurt and rejection issues from the past have kept you from totally trusting God and tro totally believing God that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Yeah, you've given him lip service. You've given him mouth service. You can talk a mean game. But God is saying, I'm the real deal here. And I'm, I'm taking you and delivering you from all that muck and junk that's on the inside of you. You personally, you the body of Christ as well. So that you can come forward now into the true light that I've assigned for you in this day and in this time. And we're excited for you in this. Hallelujah. So receive that anointing today. Uh, Apostle. Jonathan, 
I want you to come on and pray for pray us out, okay? <laughs> Praise God. And we thank you, Father. And we glorify your holy name. Hallelujah. And right now, Father, with this anointing and grace that you've given us, we're breaking the back and the yoke of abandonment issues. We're breaking the back and the yoke right now of Hallelujah, we praise you, Father. We're breaking down rejection, the spirit of rejection. We're coming against, hallelujah, the spirit of fear. And we're coming against right now trauma, being traumatized. Hallelujah, being hurt by men. Oh, hallelujah, way back in your childhood, we come against, Father, and we ask you to pull all of that up out of us. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we send this grace and we send this anointing uh hallelujah to your people right now glory to god in the name of jesus in the name of jesus okay apostle praise god come on give us our blessings so that we can go okay hallelujah oh praise you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus praise you father glory to god oh hallelujah just receive that anointing receive that grace hallelujah receive that glory god is sending it forth unto you right now in the name of jesus i keep hearing rape victims and people who were molested hallelujah as babies forgotten about it as children hallelujah mistrust of men mistrust of women because you've been hurt in the past and you brought all this into the body of christ you brought it you know with you it's okay because uh, God assigned you to this place, but praise God, now he's sending a move of his fire anointing, a move of his Shekinah glory. I see the Shekinah cloud right now. Oh, the cloud of glory that's covering you right now, coming forth to deliver you and to set you free, to refresh you in your most holy faith. Wow. Woo, glory to God. I'm feeling the fire and I'm seeing the cloud. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Just receive that right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, praise God. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And let all that is within me bless his holy name. Oh, hallelujah. Won't you join with me in agreement on this, Father? Uh, Jonathan, oh, hallelujah. There's an anointing that God is sending forth right now. Hallelujah, to break bondages, to break the control of abandonment issues, and to break the control of trauma and mistrust. Oh, hallelujah, mistrust. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father, that you are bringing trust now. You're anointing of trust as you're moving out all the, the muck and yuck and junk that has been piled on them over the years as a result of what has happened to them in the past. We rebuke every trauma, and he's covering every trauma right now with the glory of God, with his grace, with his truth. Ooh, hallelujah. And he's moving in and moving upon his people for total deliverance, the whole body of Christ, not just, you know, the leaders that we're talking to today who've been hurt, and the church hurt, all kinds of hurt outside of church. And the reason why the church hurt was so magnified is because you had been hurt in other ways, and those, those spirits draw each other. They draw to you. Hallelujah. Your abandonment and rejection draws rejection from other people. And so even the leaders, the Lord has said, that have perpetrated um, control, hallelujah, and hurt, have been controlled and hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. So there's been a circle, you know, uh, of, of, of this thing going on in the body of Christ, a great wall that God is sending his breaker angels to break down and to tear down in the body of Christ in Jesus name Ooh. thank you Lord for your healing touch right now in Jesus name to heal all of those hurts and traumas oh get to the root of them hallelujah so they can be gone hallelujah pulling up those roots in Jesus name hallelujah we bless you oh God we thank you that as you heal us we can trust you more we can Thank you, Jesus. Go from faith to faith. Hallelujah. We can t we know that you are trustworthy. And so we rely on you now, Lord. Forgive us for our unbelief and lead us into the path of everlasting life, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, where there's
there is complete trust and complete hope and complete love in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus praise God amen and so I am Prophet Tina and uh, this is Apostle Jonathan and uh, we are Jericho Way Ministries and we're here on the Prophet's Teaching Group and we're going to be signing off for the Prophet's Teaching Group uh, in just a minute uh, and please stay tuned for Apostle Charmaine Denson coming up after us this morning a great woman of God with a great word of God in her mouth praise God and so stay tuned for that but you can contact us at uh, our phone number is 480-980-1392 and you can, uh, if you want to put a seed on this word, it's prophet, it's PayPal at paypal.me slash prophetina. Praise God. And we want to catch, we want you to catch our replays, catch our replays on YouTube. Praise God. Hallelujah. And build up those hits for us. Uh, subscribe to our channel. And if you're going to watch a replay play and you have an opportunity, go ahead and watch it on YouTube. Praise God, because it counts towards us and the more people... Uh, that that, that uh, you know watch us on YouTube uh, there's an opportunity to grow funds for the ministry praise God and so you're helping us that way as well and remember that if you're going to give a seed to have that seed add up to the number 10 no matter how many numbers are in it all the numbers in the seed offering that you present add up to the number 10 and God is bringing forth an anointing of completion an extra extended anointed of completion in that seed oh hallelujah for we are complete in him he is our righteousness amen praise god and so again stay tuned for charmaine and we are signing off and thank you you're welcome and all of you who've joined with us today on youtube on uh, the prophet's teaching group facebook on live me and live star and periscope we love you guys uh, this is the love of the lord in us, through us, and by us, extend it to you this day. Have a great day in the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice today in Christ your Savior, and be glad in Him. Amen. We love you guys. Bye-bye. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His shalom, His Amen. peace. Bless you. God bless you. Love you. Mwah.